In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. In the reading for Saturday of the 30th of week, uh, 30th week of the year, St. Paul muses as, um, as a Jewish person, uh, as a devoted Jewish person, but also a follower of Christ. And he realises that God is always faithful. The Jewish people are God's chosen people. He never takes that back. But he does wish that they would see in Jesus the fulfilment of what they were wishing, wishing to come to. So he's saying that our Lord is so important, it transforms everything, that knowledge of our Lord. Perhaps we could take that away as Christians. Is life with our Lord transforming? Are we transformed? Or have we somehow missed that vibrant connection with our Lord that St. Paul had and which, as it were, motivated his life. We pray for a, a greater knowledge of God, a greater knowledge of him in our hearts, not just our head, but our hearts. There's no specific intention for this particular, this mass, uh, but I'm hearing on the radio of the of various flood difficulties and travelling difficulties. So I offer this Mass for the safety of travellers at this time. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. <clears throat> I celebrate this Mass in honour of our Blessed Lady. O God, who chose the Blessed Virgin Mary, foremost among the poor and humble, to be the Mother of the Saviour, grant, we pray, that following her example, we may offer you the homage of sincere faith and place in you all our hope of salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. <clears throat> a reading from the letter of St Paul to the Romans. Let me put a question. Is it possible that God has rejected his people? Of course not. I, an Israelite, descended from Abraham through the tribe of Benjamin, could never agree that God had rejected his people the people he chose especially long ago. Let me put another question then. Have the Jews fallen forever, or have they just stumbled? Obviously they've not fallen forever. Their fall, though, has saved the pagans in a way that the Jews may now well emulate. Think of the extent to which the world, the pagan world, has benefited from their fall and defection. Then think how much more it will be benefit it will benefit from the conversion of them all. There's a hidden reason for all this, brothers, of which I do not want you to be ignorant, in case you think that you know more than you do. One section of Israel has become blind, but this will last only until the whole pagan world has entered, and then after this, the rest of Israel will be saved as well. As scripture says, the liberator will come from Zion. He will banish godlessness from Jacob. And this is the covenant I will make with them 
when I take their sins away. The Jews are enemies of God only with regard to the good news, and enemies only for your sake. But as the chosen people, they are still loved by God, loved for the sake of their ancestors. God never takes back his gifts or revokes his choice. The Word of the Lord The Lord will not abandon his people. The Lord will not abandon his people. Happy the man whom you teach, O Lord, whom you train by means of your law. To him you give peace in evil days. The Lord will not abandon his people. The Lord will not abandon his people, nor forsake those who are his own. For judgment shall again be just, and all true hearts shall uphold it. The Lord will not abandon his people. If the Lord were not to help me, I would soon go down into the silence. When I think I have lost my foothold, your mercy, Lord, holds me up. The Lord will not abandon his people. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Let the message of Christ in all its richness find a home with you. Through him give thanks to God the Father. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. <coughs> A reading. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Now, on a Sabbath day, Jesus had gone for a meal to the house of one of the leading Pharisees, and they watched him closely. He then told the guests a parable, because he had noticed how they picked the places of honour. He said this, When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take your seat in the place of honour. A more distinguished person than you may have been invited, and the person who invited you both, may come and say, Give up your place to this man. And then, to your embarrassment, you will have to go and take the lowest place. No, when you are a guest, make your way to the lowest place and sit there, so that when your guest or your host comes, he may say, My friend, move higher. In that way, everyone will have with you at table will see you honoured, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and the man who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> I was once in a crowded church. And Father Jerry Hugh, who's a Jesuit and writer, was going to give a talk, and the place was overcrowded. And I was trying to organise it. I'm not a very good organiser. And Father Jerry Hughes came in the back, and he sort of stood at the back, and just uh, waited there with the expectant church all in front of him, a sea of faces, as a very popular person. In the end, I had to go up to him and say, Father Jerry, come on to the front where you're needed. You're the one giving the talk. Our Lord says, take the lowest place at the feast. Don't be embarrassed by taking a high place and having to move out. Like Father Jerry Hughes, I hope you will always just 
stand there waiting, waiting for God, humbly. And we've got the example of our Blessed Lady, who is foremost among the poor and humble, yet she was invited to go higher, to be Mother of the Saviour, as the first three, as the first collect prayer says. We pray that our pride, our touchiness, will never get in the way, that we will be humble and realistic about ourselves, so that we can do God's will better, as our Blessed Lady did. Lord, hear us. We pray uh, for all of those who we know that they will put God in their lives. We are returning to the practice of our faith now, and many people have found that their Sundays are being taken up by other things. Let's pray that they think in their hearts deeply and uh, put, the, put God first so that all the rest of the week may form around it. Lord, hear us. And finally, as I say, we mentioned all those travelling with the floods and heavy rain recently, and our hearts go out to uh, those in need. Lord, hear us. I'm sure you have many other prayers of your own. A quick mention now to the Lord. Lord, here are the prayers of our hearts. We open to you through the intercession of your Blessed Mother who understands all our needs. Grant what is good, you who live and reign forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, to become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, O God. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the offering of our devotion and grant that we who celebrate your Son's work of boundless charity may, through the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary, be confirmed in love of you and of our neighbour, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, give, 
even to earth's ends. You have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the loneliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the hosts of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence for ever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you. And eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Paul our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. O oh, him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I invite you to make a spiritual communion. The prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you are already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Do not let me ever be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant to your church, O Lord, that strengthened by the power of this sacrament, she may eagerly walk in the pathways of the gospel until she reaches the blessed vision of peace, which the Virgin Mary, your lowly handmaid, already enjoys eternally in glory through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. On the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>